this is some thoughts on who I am and thus what I consider people to be. So let's start off with the sort of universal aspects. We are all some sort of stardust a materia. That's what we are. And there is a potentiality within everything to sort of evolve and expand. Uh, for example, like the Earth. It used to be a hot rock, now it's like this and like this. High-tech, natural, some sort of consciousness, awareness. So every piece of dead thing has a potentiality to become or together with other dead things to become something living. And if we have a soul, then I think, well, it's, it doesn't matter what I consider if we have or don't have, but if we should have, I think it's part of a universal soul. And the material realm in which we exist separates us from one another. Now, this is the interesting piece of duality. Uh, the only kind of duality I talk about, I don't talk about the soul and my body as being duality, but I'm talking about the sort of universal consciousness and the material wor world we live in. So, in this material world, for example, I don't eat animals, but if an animal came to attack me, I would kill the animal. Uh, just like Aryuna in Bhagavad Gita, in the beginning of the book, that's a holy book uh, for the Hindus, especially Hare Krishna. Now, it's an interesting book, even if you don't take it to be like a Bible or something divine. So, Aryuna is standing on a battlefield, you know, two armies, one against another, and it's a family fight, basically. You know, his relatives are over there and so on, and they're fighting for some piece of land and honor and whatever. And he's realizing that it's all unnecessary, that it's all just phony and, you know, let's just go and shake hands basically <laughs> not in those words but i'm just summing it up and god in this case krishna is talking to him and you know explaining this sort of metaphysical thing of reincarnation karma and the the act of being forced to do something and do it without being attached to the consequences to your own body and your soul so uh, the whole book is basically a dialogue and uh, through that dialogue there are sort of theistic ideas being presented which of course can be intellectually stimulating for anyone who likes to read various kinds of books. So anyway, Aryuna in this case is forced to sort of engage in the world and pick up a fight. Just like teenagers and young people in for example Sarajevo when it was besieged by a strong army they had to defend themselves with basically nothing uh, even if they were just uh, you know leather jacket rock and rollers who uh, dig Jimi Hendrix and you know 80s punk and just wanted to peace have peace and uh, do their own thing they were forced to sort of make a stand and that's the duality of life you know meanwhile I'm realizing and I've had personal experiences of some kind of universal consciousness and all that uh, we cannot sort of, um, I mean, not that we can't, but we might be forced to engage in the material world. And that comes in the case of defending, you know, your physical existence, the existence of, of a country, of a tradition, of a civilization, and so on. So, um, so uh, that's that. And this duality is something I have experienced ever since I was a kid, when I was six years old. I called the radio station and said, you know, hey, why, why do you guys want to fight and make a war? It's so unnecessary. And my mom heard that at her work. So it's always been something I've been fascinated about. Um, so that's why I consider us to be part of everything. We are all one. Um, not in the phony new age sense, but I really mean like scientifically sort of in my opinion, the way I interpret my experiences, they might change. We are one, but we're also divided through this material existence. So that's what I am. And in that, I'm a sort of animal. I'm a human being. Um, and uh, maybe if dolphins had legs, they would be uh, walking among us and also inventing smartphones. Who knows? Octopuses are evolving at a high pace, actually. 
quite intelligent species. Uh, so, um, yeah, and, and in this material world you're forced to, or forced, I mean you are predispositioned to do various stuff. You're, you have attraction to survival, to mating, to, you know, forming a family, having offsprings. Uh, and you also have some kind of awareness of the next generation. So, meanwhile, you know, I, for example, uh, you know, take care of my hair or whatever, or, you know, find a fancy jacket and have some sort of individual uh, satisfaction, um, I still want to sacrifice myself for the future, for something good and greater. And what is the good and greater? Um, I'm not going to go so much into this, but I think that if we take a society which allows everything to sort of act natural and um, um, for everyone to sort of work on their own thing without harming ev anybody else, without any um, forced brutal limitations, uh, that society is a good starting point. So basically some kind of a Western civilization. And even within that realm of the Western civilization, there are differences. But that's the general idea. So, while being in Europe, being a European citizen, um, the place where I feel at home, that's my kind of idea. And seemingly, it's also attractive for people around the world. And so, meanwhile, we have this sort of awareness of the universal self. We also are some kind, uh, some in some way, uh, we have a duty to be aware of our cultural and our um, um, not ideological but traditional maybe um, way of living. And for me, that is the sort of Western civilization, you know, 50s to the zeros. Um, so in this life of who I am and you know the way people are uh, we have to I hope the wind doesn't disturb too much we have to be fully functional and for example if we only stimulate our brain and you know gather information and know all the facts or what we think are facts and we don't do something of it we don't feel that it fills our heart to present that to someone else or engage in that then that might be bad for, for us because um, it becomes some kind of a mountain we build of impossibilities. And we find no way through all the facts, all the history, all the future that way. We don't find any sort of um, hope or, 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 or our place within that that we can affect. And I'm not saying, I would never say limit yourself, never. I mean, go out, get smarter, learn stuff. But I think it's important to find something that you can canal, uh, canalize, channel, canalize, now I'm mixing languages, Ch uh, channel through your heart, through your gut, th through your brain, and do something about it. In the same way, uh, if, if, I, if I were to work out every day, and I didn't feel any kind of uh, joy or, or, or any kind of appreciation for that, um, that also might be like, a hint of foc that you need to focus on something else. So basically, we don't need to maximize our information nor our physical health, but we do need to maximize our use of it, really. Our, our self-engaging with our mental, soul, whatever you want to call that, and in the world. That's my experience, that's my interpretation, that's what's, what's giving me uh, unlimited amounts of energy basically and um, there are various ways people do that but it's a cliche to mention nature you know what's around me uh, but there is something as we are still animals we are still not some kind of um, post-human um, consciousness being uh, living in hard drives like Greg Egan's book, Dystopia. Um, if you have read that one, I mean, uh, I don't recommend that book, but I I if you want to read up about um, 
content of it, I'll, I'll write the title in, in the video description. So we are still animals and we are still sort of high-tech. So it comes off naturally, you know, like animals we like food, we want to eat, we want to work out, we want to be healthy. And there's also a physical benefit that I've experienced by basically uh, being in nature and, uh, you know, taking your clothes off, taking off these layers and letting your skin sort of radiate, communicate with trees. How can trees communicate? Um, I will link to a TED talk where a scientist presents a research of something... Um, yeah, I mean, there are many studies, but I, I think this presentation was very good. Where you can see how trees actually communicate, where a forest has uh, trees of family, they take care of each other, and especially a mother tree take, takes care of its own, um, its own offsprings more. That's interesting. It's, it's in the same way as we take care of our own uh, neighborhood first, our own country, our own region. You know, we feel more... Um, um, I mean, active sort of empathy when something close by happens uh, that's tragic but we may feel empathy even if it's at a distance and well, we might be against it we might work uh, against those horrible actions like, you know, families being bombed with drones every day of the year um, but still we feel most linked to that which is close by and um, so that is somehow who I am and we all want to feel special in a sense we all want to have something that is distinctive for us something that's unique with us and for if I you know take myself and make a example of myself I might think I'm special because I, I don't, but let's just assume, like, because I have a certain style, I listen to some music, I, I talk about these things, I listen to uh, those and those people, I read those books, but there are thousands of guys like me, uh, younger and older, and, uh, you know, younger and smarter, and that's great. Uh, and I always think about the movie Slacker from 1991. I'll link to the, um, to the EMDB... Um, yeah, the, that yeah. I, I'll just leave a link to the movie, and the movie in itself is just a typical kind of uh, lifestyle uh, Generation X movie. But there's one scene that's really good, in my opinion. That's a guy who has like televisions attached to himself, to himself, and holds a shotgun. I can't remember. And he said something like, why do we always have to feel so special? Why do we always have to be so chosen? Why do we always have to be, uh, you know, try to distinguish ourselves from somebody else? Um, you know, people can do that. For example, um, let's, say, let's say I'm a Christian and I walk on the street and there are Mormons here. All the way from Utah. And while they don't, while they don't allow anybody to come there and preach... They're preaching here. And if I said like, oh yeah, I believe in the Bible, you know, Jesus and all that. Uh, they would still not be satisfied. And I've tried this because they want, they want their kind of ID. The same way I can take another thing. Say if I was a, uh, what I've seen so much in the health um, lifestyle kind of field. People eating raw foods and everything that's wrong with anybody else. It's just because they don't eat raw foods. So everybody's trying to find something that makes them sort of stand above somebody else. Now, we are different and, um, you know, there are people on this planet who are, who uh, could rebuild this society in a, in a catastrophe who are really smart compared to, for example, I or you. I don't know, maybe you understand technology and all the sort of things better than me but there are people who are really really sort of more valuable in a sense um, but anyway and w there are differences between people between cultures and all that but still um, as on a, on an individual base in the end I'm nothing more than anything else in this universe I'm just a lump of material that sort of that's an antenna for what I think is the universal consciousness. Um, 
Now, I'm not going to go into this, but you know, where did that come from? What was the starting point? Has it always existed? Does it, you know, like have uh, these cycles, you know, the birth, the, the, the better stage, the golden age, the, the deterioration and the destruction, the Kali Yuga? I don't know. Um, this is not a thousand paged book, but just some idea generalizing some um, experiences that I've had. So we all, so in the end it's such a duality which we have between our universal self and the material sort of uh, way in which we deal with the world. And what's, what's the benefit here? As I said, it's all about making use of everything, everything on our body around us and try to be as, in my opinion, as respectful for all creatures and all sentient beings while at the same time being aware of culture, economy, um, your region, your people and the world system because for example um, drastic changes in demography uh, you know migration and all that that can be a problem and and so on so the one does not um, one realization of the endless universal self does not in any way make this um, kind of material dullness any more trivial. We still need to organize us, ourselves to take care of our um, people, citizens, I mean, I mean animals, living beings, everything. This, this water, this, this is basically drinking water, this forest behind me and all that. We need to organize ourselves, so we need to sort of have a duality within both worlds. And in my opinion, we are mostly stuck in the sort of material and mostly in the sort of very narrow scape of me, 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 myself, my home, my flat, my stuff, me, 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 I want to this, me, 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 me. So th 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 that's that's an observation and. That's why I think it's necessary to have a kind of educational system. Like for example in this day and age, kids are being taught how to program. It's starting up now from you know first grade, second grade, third grade. We also need to sort of have this moksha experiences like Aldous Huxley writes in his book Island. We need to you know exemplify for kids what is the universal mind the universal connection between all sentient beings and not teach them some kind of religious study like yeah there's a re religion by this name they wrote this book they consider it holy uh, there was supposed to be a man who could walk on water or a man who did this and that um, I, I, I mean come on um, so yeah in that sense a kind of uh, high-tech evolved paganism. I don't like the word paganism but what can I say something that it's rooted like a tree in the ground and is also elevating high up above with all the mesmerizing potentiality we have as a human society and while we can be frustrated because the pace is slow you know like I admire Elon Musk, I think he's the only worthy millionaire, billionaire, visionary. He basically takes everything he's got into making a huge progress. And we could, I mean, if we didn't have this fake war going on in the Middle East for 16, yeah, 17 years almost, we could have spent so much money and we could have been dancing on the moon. But anyway, I don't let that drag myself down. For me, who I am, I try to make use of what I can to trigger something um, around me and within me. So maybe somebody who's younger than me, older than me, uh, might get uh, a push because that younger person might be much smarter and have much more qualities. For example, my kids. Uh, uh, and um, 
so that they can sort of like run past me and run past us and that we teach them the essentials and you know just sit back and relax and be humble and say this was a good job done what we left was better than what we got and for that to have the energy to do that you have to empty yourself fill yourself you have to do what's right for you like my thing doesn't work for everyone and and we all have our thing but I think it's very necessary to sort of step out outside um, and just be surrounded and let your skin radiate together with nature and whatever's around you and um, because there's only one life and um, so that's that that's who I am in general terms that's I mean when I talk who I am this is like I'm trying to look from the outside I'm not going into details uh, but just some general ideas and they have always been with me I was never raised in a certain way I was never you know the school was neutral I'm not saying it's, it's, it was good but it didn't force anything so this is what I've always been sort of feeling and by the time I really went all in into this sort of perception I have or this sort of feeling about my life what it is what, what my role here is and uh, it's really sort of opened up a great amount of uh, energy basically uh, and energy in itself can be bad of course I mean you have to have a, you know it's like it's it's not one it wasn't a one mo a moment wonder you know you open up on a high mountain and you know the flash comes into your heart no 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 it was like you open up you realize there's so much energy and poten potentiality but you're still like a kid so you fumble around you hurt yourself you might hurt somebody else or something else but the faster you get used to it the better and this is something that we can all progress with 22 minutes it's time to cut this video take care and all the best ciao